Hola, hola. Quite a party, General. Lots of brass here. Brass and beautiful women. <laughs> oh, I hadn't you noticed? Oh, oh, I noticed all right, but uh, uh, you didn't tell me what it's all about and, and, well, why you wanted me to be here. Well, the State Department, unofficially, you understand, suggested we throw a welcoming party for the representative of a big European business combine. What kind of business? That's more or less classified information, but I can say that it is in the field of rocket-propelled aircraft. Rocket aircraft, eh? Yes, that's one of the reasons you're here. Being one of the Air Force top pilots, you'll find out soon enough anyway. They've developed a beauty of a... Say, talking about beauty and combines, here's the representative I was telling you about. Ah, welcome, my dear. General Thorndike, so nice to see you again. And who is this handsome man? Frau von Braunzeiger, may I present Colonel Steve Trevor of the United States Air Force. Oh, Colonel Trevor... I have heard of your wonderful exploits, and I have looked forward to meeting you. <laughs> I'm flattered, uh, Frau von Braunseiger. Oh, won't you call me Brunhilde? Well, if you like, uh, Brunhilde. And I shall call you Steve. If you two will excuse me, I'd like to greet a few of the other guests. See you later. Uh, tell me, Brunhilde, how did a beautiful woman like you get involved with rocket engines? <laughs> oh, that's a long story. The real purpose of my visit to Washington was to see you, Steve. To see me? Time is running out, and I must talk fast. Evil forces have seized control of my country, and many other countries as well. My associates and I are setting up a secret air force in South America, with which we hope to overthrow these wicked men. But, but why tell me all this? Because we need an expert like you to train and guide our Air Force. But, but my government wouldn't allow... I have already arranged for, shall we say, a leave of absence. Will you do it? For Brunhilde? For you, anything. Oh, I knew you were the man for me. Now, here is the plan. I will take the 10 o'clock flight tomorrow... You follow on the next flight, and I shall meet you at Perdito's airport with one of my compatriots. Till then, I'll be till saying. So, Brunhilde, where is your great Colonel Trevor? You forget yourself, Aunt Schmidt. In private, you will address me as Your Majesty. Forgive me, Your Majesty. I am Brunhilde. Mighty Teutonic goddess, returned out of the past to restore Germany to its ancient glory, the glory of Valhalla. Yes, Your Majesty. And my revenge for the defeat of Germany in two world wars shall be the destruction of America. Adolf Hitler's dream shall come true. Hitler was a fool and his third Reich a mirage. I shall establish the Fourth Reich, which will rule the world for 10,000 years. But look, there he comes, the stupid American. He has a girl with him. Rather pretty, too, in that uniform. Ah, Steve, my Liebchen. And who is your pretty young friend? Uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Diane Prince, Brunhilde. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Imagine bumping into Steve way down here of all places. And on leave, too. We can have so much fun. Well, I'm, I may have to leave you a little while, Diane, while while Brunhilde and I... Nonsense. I'll bring her along, too. What are you doing, Majesty? She might give the whole plan away. Don't worry. We'll get rid of her when we reach camp. Come along now, Steve. And Diane, my dear. Captain Von Schmidt will drive us to our base. You will find it quite comfortable. And here we are. You two look around a bit while Von Schmidt and I prepare a proper welcome. We'll be back very soon. Well, Diane, it, it really was a surprise meeting you here. But it was no accident. You may be in great danger. Danger? What are you talking about? 
Intelligence just learned that your precious Brunhilde has nuclear-armed rockets down here, and they're wondering what would happen if those rockets were aimed at the United States. Oh, I can't believe a fine woman like Brunhilde would be mixed up in a thing like that. Oh, wouldn't I, though? You are so naive, Colonel Trevor. Brunhilde, I, d I don't believe it. I had hoped to be able to make better use of your talents. But your snoopy young friend has changed our timetable. Seize them both, Von Schmidt, and yeah. tie them up. And now, prepare to launch rocket number one. Destination New York City. No, you can't. Oh, no? Then watch. Those steel plates on the ground, they're opening. It's an underground silo. And there's the nose of a rocket pointing north. Order the countdown, Von Schmidt. It has begun, Your Majesty. Suffering Sappho, they really mean business. Time for Diane Prince to become Wonder Woman. Now I'll break those puny ropes and go into action. Well, I'm stopping that rocket before it begins. Donna Blitzen, it's Wonder Woman. Where did she come from? Ah, Wonder Woman, we are too late. It's already lifting off. New York is doomed. Not yet, is it? Oh, my tiara, like this. It sliced the nose cone right off. The nuclear warhead is dropping harmlessly into the jungle. Kvick von Schmidt, launch number two, and I shall ride it through the heavens myself, like the Valkyries of old. She's gone mad. She's climbing the rocket, and there's ignition and blast off. It's rising straight up. And that's the way it must keep going. Good heavens, a plane coming on collision course. It's my robot plane. I have commanded it to attach itself magnetically to the rocket and keep the rocket headed up into orbit around the sun, from which it will never escape. Look, it's locked onto the rocket. And Brunhilde is being returned to her Valhalla forever, taking her mad dream of world conquest with her. But Von Schmidt, he's escaping. Don't worry. The authorities are waiting for him and his crew. Wonder Woman, you're wonderful.